So let's look at how to represent a cross product as a matrix multiplication so that we can get those equations in the form of matrix products. So the cross product of a vector A with a vector B, if these are three dimensional vectors, can be represented as a three by three matrix times the vector B, where the um, representation of vector A is in terms of a three by three matrix called um, this bracket at A with an X at the subscript. So that's a skew symmetric matrix. And you can easily show that it takes this form. So let's see how to do that. If I write um, A as A1, A2, A3, and B as B1, B2, B3, then A cross B is, I can calculate that as the determinant of this three by three matrix written like this. And calculating that um, determinant will give me A two B three minus A three B two. The second element is A three B one minus A one B three. And the third element is A1, B2, minus A2, B1. OK, so let's see if that's um, what we get if we multiply this, um, this matrix here times B. So I would get 0 minus A3, A2, A3, zero minus a one minus a two a one zero times b one b two b three so multiplying that out i get um, minus a three b one plus a um, oops sorry that should be a b two uh, times a two b three a three b one minus a one b three and minus a two b one plus a one b two so so yeah that that is true okay so writing then we have the epipolar constraint as a cross product. We can also write then as a matrix product where I wrote um, the cross product operation as a three by three skew symmetric matrix for T. So let this um, product of T times R be called the matrix E. So that's just a three by three matrix because both um, these two parts are three by three matrices. So then um, I have the epipolar constraint defined by this P0 transpose times E times P1 equals 0. Or writing down what that actually is in terms of its elements, I get this. So the essential matrix is that matrix E. It relates the image of a point in one camera to its image in the other camera, given a translation and rotation. So let's look at an example here. I'm going to create a scene uh, com consisting of points on the face of a cube. So the points that I'll create will be um, points like this on the corners and in the middle. And I'm going to look at this cube from, from two different um, positions. Um, I guess I'll call them camera one and camera two here. And um, I'm just going to make up the pose of camera one and camera two with respect to the model. So here's the MATLAB code that does this. I'm going to make up a camera generating image of size 300 by 300. Here's the focal length and the image center. Um, here's the intrinsic camera parameter matrix. Sometimes that's called K. Here I'm defining the points on the face of the cube. 
here I'm creating the mod the pose of the model with respect to camera one okay so I'm creating a rotation matrix out of these three angles and here is the the translation of the model with respect to the camera and here's um, rendering image one I simply multiply that um, intrinsic and extrinsic parameter matrices times the model and of course divide through by the third element and then um, those points now are in um, normalized coordinates so to convert it to unnormalized coordinates I multiply by the intrinsic parameter matrix uh, n int here then the second view um, I'm going to create the I'm going to define the rotation translation of of the um, of camera two with respect to camera one, and then calculate the pose of the model with respect to camera two. And this would project or render the uh, points on with respect to that camera here. So this is what I get if I run that in MATLAB. Um, the, this is the pose of the model with respect to camera one. And here are the points that I have generated. And in camera two, um, the pose of camera two with respect to camera one, and the model points as if it were seen by camera two. Okay, so now the essential matrix, remember, was this T times R, where T is the skew symmetric matrix corresponding to T. So I can create that if I know the translation and rotation, which I do, um, by just multiplying the um, the skew symmetric matrix corresponding to T times the rotation from C2 to C1. So this is my uh, essential matrix for this scene between those two cameras. So let's see how to draw epipolar lines. So let's look at the representation of a line in 2D. So in the XY plane, the equation of a line can be written as AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Of course, um, those parameters are not unique because if I multiply that equation by any constant k, I still get the same value. So a, b, c are only known up to a scale factor. Or we can think of them as a homogeneous coordinate, uh, a point, a vector in homogeneous coordinates called L. So a point P lies on the line L only if P transpose times L equals zero. So to see that, um, we just write um, P L as X Y one times A B C, and we get A X plus uh, B Y plus C. So if that equals zero, then that is the equation of a line, and P actually is a point on that line. Okay, so an epipolar line, uh, recall that we, this equation defined the relationship between points in the two images. So if I just think of this second product here, the E times P1, that's the equation of an epipolar line corresponding to P1 in the camera zero image. Or writing it another way, this is uh, point P0. This is the equation of the line created by multiplying E P1 together. And I get the equation of the line in camera zero's image here. So L equals ABC is E times P1, and that's the parameters of that epipolar line. To visualize it, um, I'm going to um, pick a point in the second image. I'm going to calculate the corresponding epipolar line in the first image by multiplying E times P1. And then I'm going to draw it on the first image by um, just finding two endpoints of that line. For example, let um, the x, the first endpoint, have an x coordinate of minus 1 and then I solve for the y coordinate using the equation of the line. And then I pick the second point to have an x coordinate of plus 1, and I solve for its y coordinate using the equation of the line. And this is the MATLAB code that does that. So if you run that, um, well, first, before I run that, <coughs> I'm going to show 
um, if I wanted to, to draw the epipolar lines in the other image, let's say um, I have, um, I can form the essential matrix going the other way. In this case, it's the, uh, it's the translation of uh, camera zero with respect to camera one, and R is the rotation of camera zero with respect to camera one. So um, I create the epipolar line going the other way, and then I can draw um, the epipolar line in the first image corresponding to the point in the second image. So let me go ahead and run that. Okay, so this is the uh, scene, the first um, image. This is the second image. And now I'll go ahead and start drawing these lines here. So um, this is the point in, in the second image, and this is the corresponding point in the first image. And you can see um, the line does pass through the actual projection of the point in the first image. Um, this is the second point here in the second image, and this is the corresponding epipolar line for that. And the third point here passes through the third point here. So I keep doing that, and I get all these corresponding epipolar lines. Like that. Okay, so then I can go the other way. I can take point number one in the first image and draw the corresponding epipolar line in the second image, and I get that, and it does pass through that point. Similarly for the second point and the third point and so on. So that generates all the epipolar lines in that image.